morning church. Wow, isn't it great to be together again? <laughs> oh, I just love the worship time. You know, worship and the word, they flow together. It is so important. It's, uh, it's just a really important part of the congregation time together to be in worship and flow on into the word. Just love it. Well, I believe that uh, we're in a really exciting time. We've had a conference, haven't we? Beautiful conference. Uh, uh, Saturday night where the girls had a great time. Friday night, the guys had a great time. Sunday morning, it was awesome. Words kept flowing. So, uh, you know, one of the things that I'll speak for the, the guys that weren't there on Saturday night, a beautiful, beautiful word from Melissa, and she said that we need to have unrestrained boldness. How awesome is that? But that's for all of us. God is saying it's time for us to pick it up, you know, start moving. He wants us in a new place with strength, with confidence, and with boldness. And I believe that he is really starting to move in our hearts and lives through all the words that we've been receiving over the weeks and months, just really encouraging us to, to really put us in a place so that we know who we are in Christ. We know who we are in Christ. And there's a strength with that. There's a strength that, with that that nothing, nothing can stop us when we move in it. So we're in this place right now where I believe the life of Jesus Christ and the light of Jesus Christ and the love of Jesus Christ is settled within us. And when we start to take hold of this and move in this authority, we're just going to see the mountains move. The mountains are going to be moved. The difficulties and the dark places and the hard places are going to be moved. We have victory when we move in this way because God is able. God is able to move in our lives in a new way. I really believe that for us, we need to know that peace is where he is taking us. And, and, of course, peace usually means an absence of conflict or war. But the Hebrew word for peace, shalom, has such a deep and strong meaning. So it's the peace from God. And it means so much more than just absence of stress or sitting in a quiet place looking at the sea. Beautiful to do. But this is what shalom, peace, means. Wholeness, completeness, health, safety, prosperity, and these blessings are permanent. And so when we greet each other with shalom, these are the words that we're speaking over each other. And we know that Jehovah Shalom is the name of God. So we are meant to be at peace within and this completeness and protection in the Lord is shalom. Ephesians 1, 3 to 4. What a beautiful scripture this is. So many blessings come from Ephesians. I love reading it. And this one says, Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm has already been lavished upon us as a love gift from our wonderful heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, all because he sees us wrapped into Christ. This is why we celebrate him with all our heart. And he chose us to be his very own, joining us to himself even before he laid the foundation of the universe. Because of his great love, he ordained us so that we would be seen as holy in his eyes and with unstained innocence. The life of Jesus Christ, the light of Jesus Christ, and the love of Jesus Christ is in us. When he is our Lord and Master, we've been singing the most beautiful songs about Jesus, about the name of Jesus. And this is who he is. And when he is within us, this is who we are walking in this strength that he has for us. Our life is to be the word. Our life is to be the word that when we see others, when we speak to others, 
This is what is transferred from us to them. You know, hands are very important. Hands are very important. And when we're filled with the love of Jesus Christ, when we're filled with the light, his life, and we shake somebody's hand, we touch somebody on the shoulder, we are transferring this great blessing, this shalom, shalom, shalom blessing into their lives. And so he has marked us with his love. And we have a life in Jesus Christ that is so deep and so powerful. Amen. Romans 8.16 For the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us as he whispers into our innermost being, you are God's beloved child. And when we read the word Holy Spirit, it's referring to the power, the glory that is Holy Spirit. But when we read the Holy Spirit, we're talking about the person. How powerful is that? So we have the power of the Holy Spirit that we move in and we have the person of the Holy Spirit within us. In Ephesians 1, 17 to 18, I pray that the Father of glory, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, would impart to you the riches of the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation, to know him through your deepening intimacy with him. I pray that the light of God will illuminate your eyes of your imagination, flooding you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling that he finds in us, his holy one. The Apostle Paul always looked ahead. He was always looking to see what was up ahead with such joy and such excitement and not behind. And that's a word for us at this time because he's giving us the opportunity to be strengthened in such a way when we come into this understanding of who we are in Christ, being filled with the power that is the Holy Spirit that he has so much more for us than we can think or imagine. And we have to be given, we've been given this life of Jesus Christ, and we've been given the light of the Holy Spirit, and we've been given the love of God that passes all understanding. You know, the creativity that is within you, you have received directly from the throne room. Does that sound strange? I just love it when uh, we know that so many people are, are so creative, musicians, artists, and all these sort of amazing people that do incredible things that I've met in this wonderful town. And you know, every person who operates in this area of being really creative is hearing directly from God. Definitely hearing from God. So as we listen to the Holy Spirit, as the scripture has said, we're hearing wisdom. We're hearing revelation that takes us through any situation that we're going to face. So the Holy Spirit guides us. You know this. He enlightens us through our spirit. Jesus Christ is life, and this life is the light within us. John 8, 12 says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life. And the light of Jesus Christ shines from you. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Wherever you go, you're going to light up the room. Is that right? You are going to be the one that people, you're a magnet. You're a magnet. You're a light magnet. People are drawn to those who are filled with the light of Jesus Christ. Have you ever noticed this? You go into a, a, a shop, a store, whatever it is, and there's just you and the person in there. And suddenly there's a crowd. Have you noticed that? People start to flood in where you are. You are a magnet because of the presence of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit is flowing from you. It is just an incredible thing to experience. In John 14, 23, Jesus says, If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My father will love him 
and we will come to make our home within him. So the life of God has been imparted into our spirits. It might sound as though I'm repeating myself, but this is so big, it is so profound. When we take hold of it, we are in a new place within ourselves. The things that have been tormenting us, things that have been a problem, just cannot come near. They cannot touch us. And the nature of God is in our spirit. How awesome is that? And the Holy Spirit is living and abiding in our spirits. In Isaiah 11, 2, this is what the word says. The spirit of the Lord rests on him, referring to Jesus. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. This is... Isaiah prophesying the Holy Spirit resting on Jesus Christ. And there are seven distinct aspects of the Holy Spirit. And these seven aspects cover so many areas. Prophecy, ability in the arts, music, creativity, discerning of truth, judgment, spiritual leadership, and intimacy with God. How powerful is that? When we're in a place that is really difficult for us, there is only the Lord. And I'm sure every one of you have been in a place that has been difficult, a wine press situation or the Valley of Baca. And you go, how am I ever going to get through this? Have you ever been in the spot where you think, I'm seeing people around me, I can see that life is going on, but for me, I only see black. Blackness in my life, blackness in my mind. Because we do get put into these situations where there is only one way out, and that is the power of the Lord. And so I'm speaking from my own experience. It's a difficult time when you go to a place where you've been betrayed or you've suffered deep grief or difficult things have happened and there's nothing but blackness in front of you. And of course, this is the time the enemy loves to put doubt across you. Well, what's your point of being here? What are you doing now? Where are you going to go from here? We are challenged by the enemy as soon as we are in a place where there is doubt in our lives. And you know, the only way through is with Jesus Christ. Speaking for myself, this was such a difficult time. My life had been so nice, so easy, everything was perfect. You know, I always had the flowers on the on the dining room table and all the beautiful things around. But then things change when a great sadness comes into your life that you've never, ever experienced before. Nobody teaches you how to face this when it comes. You have to learn to walk through the valley. And so this was a time where there was nothing but blackness until... My beautiful husband, in, in desperation, one morning, laid his hands on my shoulders. And I don't know what he prayed, but he, he was obviously a channel for the Holy Spirit who just flowed through him to me. This is how powerful hands are. This is how powerful you are when you lay hands on people who are hurting. And I can assure you, that I saw and felt golden light go right through my body. Now, how that happens, how to explain it, I don't know. That's all I can say. But when the power of the Holy Spirit goes through you to bring new life, you know you've been changed and been changed for life. You know, sometimes, sometimes we, we just see people as all together. You know, nothing ever looks to go wrong in their life. They're always together. They're always happy. The children are all clean and smiling and yours aren't. And, you know, all those sort of things. But 
it's interesting how God takes us through these times where he draws us closer to him like never before. And it's really cold, cold face time, isn't it? You've hit the wall. It's cold face time. But in that, we see right through the Bible, the Lord has taken all these amazing people through these times out the other side. They are stronger, more confident. And what happens? They end up being mighty warriors for the Lord. Mighty warriors for the Lord. I do believe that we have a church full of mighty warriors. You've come through so many things, so many things. You've moved to Geraldton from all over this nation, just as we have. And when I ask people, when did you come to Geraldton and why did you come to Geraldton? It's always, well, I just felt the call of the Lord. I just felt I should be here. I just needed whatever it is. Could be family, could be all sorts of things. But God calls people to this city for a purpose. I'm convinced of that. And he is shaping us, and he is molding us, and he is knocking the spots off us. But he, has, he is getting us ready as a mighty, mighty army. Warriors who will not turn back, who will not be defeated, who will be victorious as they go forward. And take others with them. And take others with them. Oh, the Lord is just so mighty. So mighty. But I just want to go back to this area of uh, when there's jealousy or betrayal or grief or whatever it is that happened in your life. The interesting thing is that this usually comes at you, hits you from someone who's close to you. Someone who's close to you. And of course, this is where the enemy loves to come in with doubt. And we see that if we entertain the doubt, we've opened a door. And once that door is open, then it comes in. It's a spiral down. It's a spiral down. And you know, we have such an important ministry, each one of us, wherever we go, to just encourage others to put out that hand that has the power of the Holy Spirit in it on somebody's shoulder and see them light up because the light that's in you transfers to them. Amen? How good is that? And Jesus, of course, was challenged by the devil when he was taken into the desert by the Holy Spirit. And with the words, this is what the devil said, if you are the son of God, doubt. There it is, doubt. And Jesus answered, of course, with the word of God, it is written. It is written. And of course, we can uh, look at Genesis uh, 37 and we see that Joseph, Joseph was called to be a ruler and a deliverer of the people through two prophetic dreams he was given as a 17-year-old. And Joseph went from being his father's favorite son, uh, being given a beautiful coat by his father, made of many colors. It was long and flowing, and that was a uh, fit for royalty in those days, to being attacked by jealousy. Proverbs 27, 4 says, and I don't have the scripture up for this, so you might like to note it down. Proverbs 27, verse 4. Wrath is cruel and anger is torrent, but who is able to stand before jealousy? Jealousy is very powerful. Joseph had uh, his brothers so jealous of him uh, because he shared the dreams that the Lord had given him. They wanted to kill him. Instead, he was sold off to travelers, and much later, he was used by God to save his family and the nation. Joseph was attacked because he dared to share the dreams from the Lord and was clothed in a cloak or a mantle that displayed that he was greatly loved. And each one of you wears a beautiful mantle a beautiful cloak that the Lord has put upon you in the spirit realm. And you wear that and you are seen and you are dangerous to those that are not of God in the spirit realm. So wear it with pride. 
In Mark 10, we, uh, we hear about Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus as we know him, wearing a very dusty and dirty cloak and he was sitting by the roadside and, uh, you know, sometimes that can be us, that we just sit down, give up and the dust of the day, the dust of the people, the dust of other people's words settle upon us, hurts, rejection, betrayal, betrayal by those we trusted, always someone who is close. And wearing this heavy cloak that is everything of the past. How easy it is to get into that old cloak of the past and go, woe me, oh me, I missed, look what they did, look what they said. But you know, even when the Apostle Paul was in jail facing death, he looked forward, he was excited for the future. He didn't want to sit there and look at the past. And so the Lord is saying, look, cut it off. We have such power when we speak out forgiveness over those who have hurt us. We have such authority. They may never hear us speak that forgiveness, or if we speak it to them face to face, it may mean nothing. But you have spoken something that is so profound into the heavens that the Lord now hears you and there is a disconnect in, in the spirit realm. So there's forgiveness. And from that we need to surrender. We say, Lord, take it all. Take me all. I'm emptied. Fill me up, Lord. We need to surrender. And then we need to be able to Give thanks. Thanksgiving is so powerful. We enter the gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. How powerful is that word? We enter the gates with thanksgiving. You know, when we speak out thanksgiving, and we hear it a lot in our prayer meeting, we do it a lot ourselves. We give thanks. It's part of our, our way of life, isn't it? We thank you for this and we thank you for that. But giving thanks to the Lord means his grace immediately flows over us. His grace, the grace of the Lord God Almighty flows over us when we move in a place of thanksgiving. So we can be wearing this heavy cloak that is everything of the past. We can be weighed down and just sitting in one spot and not moving. And who hasn't been there? We we do. We, we come to these places where we feel we can't go forward. We can't go left. We can't go right. We see it's too dark up ahead. And the, You know, we need to know the Lord is saying, get up and get moving. Get up, get strong, get moving. So we are to lay all this darkness aside, everything that uh, we've been carrying, everything that covers us, and let the light of Jesus Christ Shine from our hearts. Shine from our hearts. We need to look to the Lord. We, we, need to, we need to know that if you look to another person for your strength, for your identity, for your peace, and anything else, you will be sadly disappointed. We cannot look to others for our identity. We need to know that in these situations, we look to the Lord. We look up. We look up. We throw off the cloak. We throw, off the cro throw it off that uh, someone else has put over you. It's not your cloak anyway. God has given you a beautiful cloak. And the colors, think of the, the coat of many colors that Joseph wore. Had so many beautiful colors in it. I believe they are all the giftings and the creativity that... Uh, God had placed over him that he has for each one of us, for you and me, creativity, beautiful blessings, the colors, the colors of the Lord God Almighty that comes from heaven are our cloak, our mantle. And we need to know that we are gifted. We are gifted in so many different areas and we are to move in those areas now, not to hold back, not to be restricted in any way at all. And even though you may 
have walked into a time of hardship or difficulty, the Lord is always with you. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. We know those words. But when you uh, turn to the right or the left, he's going to be there. This is not a case where you're sitting still and nothing's happening. He is going to be there. You will listen to his voice and hear that he will say, this is the way, walk ye in it. So we need to listen to the Lord. We need to take time. We need to be strengthened. We need to be wait to be renewed. We need to wait on the Lord and rise up on wings of eagles. Eagles don't stay in the storm. Eagles rise above the storm. They fly over the top into a safe place. So God is able to take you higher in him. And in victory, he will take you higher. The chains are broken. Jesus has done that. There is unstoppable boldness that he has for every one of us. We are to be his warriors in this day. God cares for us. In Psalm 55, verse 22, the word says, Cast your cares or your burdens on the Lord and he will sustain you. You will never, he will never let the righteous fall. So the enemy wants us to think about our problems continually. He wants to keep you occupied trying to work everything out yourself. So if we start to carry our burdens, difficulties do come. How often have we said, well, that's too, that's too simple or too not really important enough for God to work out? You know, I've learned, as a lot of you have learned, I'm sure, that when you hand something to the Lord, you put it in his hands and you say, Lord, I'm not going to touch it anymore. You see him move quickly in your life. But of course, if we go back, pick the things up, try and work it through ourselves, then we know that he stands aside and lets us do what we think we can do better. Because we have to know God is able. He's able to take everything we hand over to him and bring you through to a place of peace. Shalom. Peace. And we're meant to be victorious in life. Unrestrained boldness. Betrayal is a breaking of trust. We know that. And Jesus knew the pain of being betrayed firsthand. Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Jesus didn't become bitter or angry or vindictive. It was just the opposite. After Judas kissed Jesus on the cheek and betrayed him into the hands of the Jewish religious leaders, Jesus called Judas a disciple and a friend. When it happens to us and we feel betrayed, we're to call out to Jesus. We're to go to the Lord in prayer and give it to him, then forgive. Forgiveness brings release and God's love is unconditional. Jude one twenty four says, To him who is able to keep you from falling. So we have life, we have light, we have love, all in Jesus Christ. And Jesus is in you. But if you have not invited Jesus Christ into your life, I'm really encouraging you to pray this prayer. And we'll pray it together. The word says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if we confess with our mouths Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, we will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And Romans 10, 13 says, For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. By his grace, God has already done everything to provide salvation. Your part is simply to believe and receive. So let's pray it out loud. Jesus, I confess that you are my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. And by faith in your word, I receive salvation now. Thank you for saving me. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, I'd love to speak with you after the service. 
I'm going to finish now. I just believe the Lord uh, has such a beautiful word in the Song of Songs that he wants to wash over you, to have you immersed in it, to have you soak in it, to let you know he loves you so much, so much that he gave his life for you. And this is what the word says. Fasten me upon your heart as a seal of fire forevermore. This living, consuming flame will seal you as my prisoner of love. My passion is stronger than the chains of death in the grave, all-consuming as the very flashes of fire from the burning heart of God. Place this fierce, unrelenting fire over your entire being. Rivers of pain and persecution will never extinguish this flame. Endless floods will be unable to quench this raging fire that burns within you. Everything will co be consumed. It will, be, it will stop at nothing as you yield everything to this furious fire until it won't even seem to you like a sanct Thank you, Lord, that your holy fire is resting upon every one of us. Thank you, Lord, for your presence, that you are filling us to overflowing for the days ahead. You are calling out the warriors. You are calling out the preachers. You are calling out those that will minister your word. You are calling out those who've been hidden, who've been held back by circumstances, but not by you. Lord, you're saying this is the time. I want my children to arise. I want my children to break forth. I want my children to be a voice that is so strong that it cannot be stopped. His presence is upon each one of us. He is filling our hearts with a burning fire, a fire of love that cannot be put out. We thank you, Lord God, that your presence upon each one of us is renewing us and strengthening us and causing any chains to be broken, causing anything that has been a blockage, causing anything that has been a mantle or a covering or a cloak that has just been of the past to fall to the ground, that every one of us being set free in the power of your presence, Lord. We thank you for that. We thank you that you're touching us, Lord, bringing us into divine order in you, mind, body, soul, and spirit. Thank you, Lord. We are spirit, soul, and body in you. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Praise God.